think I'm on Victoria's point with you, Greg, because a, a, a bit of this, and Victoria will blame me and others of our IEA colleagues for not having been tough enough throughout. But my mindset has changed. At the outset of this, when it first happened, and people could reasonably say, we don't really know what this thing is yet. Mm -hmm. We don't really know how dangerous it is yet. You know, we're, um, you know we, let's lock down. And I kind of thought, well, you've got this argument you might buy time. You've got the argument the NHS must, might be overwhelmed. Then you had the argument that, well, actually, let's buy some time for the vaccine to roll out when we brilliantly, you know, that was discovered by these brilliant scientists. And again, I could just about say, all right, well, let's buy a bit of time for that. What are we now buying time for? Where are the, the, It's not just the goalposts that have moved. We've moved to a totally different football stadium, haven't we? No, look, I, I, absolutely. And let, let's have a look at the last few months. Scotland and Wales have had harsher restrictions than England has had, certainly for the last couple of months. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. that actually they've had worse case rates That's, yep, yep. <laughs> than, than England has with a, with a, a freer society. Likewise, we know uh, from the press release from Pfizer this morning that they believe three doses of their vaccine works effective against Omicron. Uh, we know that from South Africa and from the cases that we've got in this country and other places around the world, nobody has died of this variant. Nobody. Not one. Uh, and it, it looks like it's a very mild illness. So... We've got this fantastic vaccination programme where millions of people have received their jabs, rolled out thanks to the private sector developing it uh, at great yep. pace across the country and, and in many other countries in the world. Let's put our faith in that. Let's live with this virus that's going to be with us forever, that will carry on mutating and get on with our lives. Yep. Well, we're already hearing some of the breaking news from the press conference from Monday. We're going to be told to work from home if you can, I mean, the vagaries there, and we're told that this variant um, could double in the UK um, in two and a half to three and a half days. But we said sort of, it's not obvious that's a, that's a disastrous thing. On, on your point, Greg, about, you know, where are the threats here? We've, we've been comparing here at the IA the amount of deaths due to the, this new variant compared it to other causes. Yeah. These are the number of people who, on average, we obviously haven't gone through every death certificate, would have died across the world in the last two weeks, uh, 61,538 deaths from car accidents, 15,384 murders. Uh, on average, 96 left-handed people would have died using products designed for right-handed people, 17 deaths from falling out of bed, and depending on how hungry they were, there are two deaths from shark attacks every 10 weeks, roughly, across the world. Deaths by um, Omicron across the globe as we speak, zero. Yeah. Um, the, 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 this, there couldn't be a clearer justification that this is an overreaction. The government should be doing more to prevent some shark attacks, shouldn't it? Well, I mean, we've got to take shark attacks very seriously. They're, they're, in, they're, in, they're in waters around England now uh, for all sorts of, all sorts of uh, reasons. I think what we're going to be told, and obviously I can't predict what the, the PM is saying right now is there was some scaremongering from various public health uh, officials earlier saying we could be looking at a thousand hospitalizations a day well i don't know where they're plucking that fact out from because it's certainly not evident in any yep. of the countries that we see this variant live i'm sure that there will be some argument around well just in case precautionary principle but we've basically got two years worth of knowledge sure. of this thing now we know from the last few months that we can successfully run a, an economy, run a country yeah. with, be it the Delta variant, in circulation. So I just don't buy it. I, don't, I, I think the public health world need to be pushed back in their box a little bit. Uh, we need to say, yes, of course new viruses are serious things, and of course we need the scientific uh, probing of them and analysis of them and ensuring that vaccines are as effective as they can be against them. But that should not come at the cost of freedom. That should not come at the cost of the economy. And it certainly should not come at the cost of mental health of our population, particularly children's mental health. And if there's one Which has thing, been terribly hit by schools. If, if there's one thing that has frightened me more than anything else over this pandemic, it has been the stories of the massive spikes in self-harm amongst secondary age uh, children, yep. students. The huge hit 
uh, to the to the early years. I have a lockdown son myself. My second child was born in January 2020, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. his development is noticeably different, having basically been stuck sure. at home for his first year, than my other two yeah. children. That is a ticking time bomb as that generation of children come up through the school system yeah. and their learning and their development and, and socialization. Yeah. Uh, going really forward, their yeah. mental health, is, it really hurts. Okay. Well, if you enjoyed that conversation, why not watch one of these other videos? And while you're here, remember to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way, you'll never miss out on a single IEA broadcast.